As we approach the midway point of the season, more specifically the upcoming NBA trade deadline, which is February 10th, so really a little over a month from now, teams are getting in the thick of where they see themselves shaping up for the rest of the season. Either be sellers at the deadline and look to rebuild based on their underperformance or buyers if they're right on the cusp of being a playoff team or a fringe contender or even a title contender, how they can beef up their roster even further. Now for the Bulls, it's fair to say that they have exceeded expectations, at least mine anyway. I did not expect the Bulls to be sitting on the top of the Eastern Conference nearly halfway through the year. And the debate among Bulls fans right now is do the Bulls try to go all in for a big man to put them over the top for title contention, or do they get a temporary piece to strength the roster a bit further and give the front court a little more depth, or do they just stay put and try not to fix what is otherwise an already great team? And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So what's going on everyone? You were listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, real quick, in case you missed my last video, I was very fortunate enough to have our very own Bulls radio play-by-play -play announcer in Chuck Swirsky come on the channel to share his thoughts on the Bulls thus far and expectations for the future. So if you missed it, be sure to check it out as Chuck is just a wealth of knowledge with his extensive experience working in the industry. I'll leave the video linked on the end screen of this one as well as down below. But anyway, let's get back into today's topic. So I continue to see throughout the Bulls community, whether it be on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, or just through friends and family, but that's what should the Bulls do Leading up to the trade deadline, is it worth making a move, potentially sacrificing our future for the chance at a title? I mean, we've seen this Bulls team all season. They're pretty good and their record would indicate that. Why make changes to an already established roster with good team chemistry? Well, here's the thing, and I've said this before, I even mentioned it in my discussion with Chuck yesterday that the playoffs are an entirely different beast. It's a whole new level of intensity, especially for some of these superstars who take it up a notch in the playoffs versus the regular season. And the fact still remains that as good as the Bulls have been and they will continue to be, this team is going to have a hard time come playoff time going against the heavy hitters of the Eastern Conference in Giannis, Joel Embiid, and Kevin Durant without some added front court players. And really what I mean by that is a solid power four because for the most part, we're covered at the five with Vooch and Tony Bradley as backup. Yes, I know some of you will say, well, we have Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr. and Alfonso McKinney and they do just fine. Yes, they've stepped up in many ways in filling that four spot, although we haven't seen too much of McKinney thus far since signing him for the rest of the season. And then he obviously fell into the protocol shortly thereafter, but come on now, outside of McKinney, Javante and Derek Jones Jr. are not meant to be power forwards. They have been playing at the four out of necessity for the Bulls. Javante Green is 6'4", and Derek Jones Jr. is 6'5". And McKinney, even though he is listed as a small forward, but he can play power forward because of the size that he has at 6'5", 215 pounds. And as much as the story around McKinney is great, a guy that has worked his way into the NBA, a Chicago native who grew up as a Bulls fan, we still need to remind ourselves that the guy was operating on 10 day contracts or on two way deals working in and out of the G League before recently signing his contract with the Chicago Bulls. He's averaged four points per game over the course of his NBA career. Like we have to be real with ourselves. These guys aren't players that are gonna be legitimate competitors against the likes of the Eastern Conference foes that I just mentioned in a seven game series. They're just not. So in my personal opinion, which you should always take it with a grain of salt. I'm just some random dude on YouTube, but the Bulls do need to make some sort of move to better position the roster going into the playoffs. Now, there is a possibility that Patrick Williams could return to the Bulls lineup before the season concludes, but we're going to assume that he doesn't for this video. So how do the Bulls beefen up their front court a bit to where they can position themselves for a successful run in the playoffs? Now, I've created videos in the past on some of the potential buyout candidates or potential trade options for the Bulls that are realistic. I even did a few dedicated ones on trade proposals for guys like Christian Wood or Jeremy Grant, really options for all in moves for the Bulls anyway. So I'm not going to belabor the point here because really this video isn't to say here are all the options and we should pursue these guys and here is what it would take to make a deal work. I've already covered that in prior videos. 
This is more so to outline why even though the Bulls have been very successful so far this season, it's unlikely they'll be able to make a deep run in the playoffs without an added front court piece. Whether that be in the form of a trade or a buyout pickup, it's going to need to happen. Now, all that being said, though, as Bulls fans, we should have 100% faith in this front office that they're going to make the right decision. And even if they don't make a move, they don't add a front court piece in this example, we shouldn't be worried because at the same time, there's something to be said about team chemistry. And this Bulls team has incredible chemistry and cohesion among its players. And you could have all the talent in the world, but without guys knowing their roles, being unselfish and having that common bond and understanding that they want to win, you won't be a successful team as a result. And I'm sure the front office is going to be very calculated in their approach in assessing which guys are going to be the best culture fit for this team. Because the last thing you want to do is disrupt that team chemistry that this team has been able to develop in a short period of time. Now, for me personally, and I've talked about this before, is for the Bulls to go with a more temporary short-term option at the power forward spot. Because the fact of the matter is Patrick Williams is going to be coming back, whether it be at the end of this season or next season, he's the Bulls starting power forward. So all these rumors surrounding the Bulls trading for Christian Wood, Jeremy Grant, or Miles Turner, guys that are not on expiring contracts, you have to remember this is going to conflict with Patrick Williams and where he fits on this team going into next season. Now, some will say, well, just have Patrick come off the bench, have him develop more while he's young. And when the guy that they bring in, whoever that potentially would be, whenever his contract expires, then have P. Will when he is ready and primed to be reinserted back into the starting lineup. And that's fair. It's definitely an option. The only problem with that, though, is in order for the Bulls to get any of the guys that I just mentioned, Patrick Williams would most certainly have to be included in a trade package. Because all of these teams that are going to be sellers at the trade deadline, teams like the Pacers, the Pistons, the Rockets, who have these power forwards that the Bulls could really benefit from, they're going to be looking to sell to rebuild for their future. And they're going to want young players with upside potential and draft capital. Like I see some people saying that, well, the Bulls should just trade Kobe White and a pick for Jeremy Grant or even Christian Wood. Like that's not going to get it done. That's not even close to the level of return that these teams are going to want, nor is it even close to the type of package that other teams are going to be able to offer more for them. Now, obviously, there is this ever long debate of whether to trade Kobe White or not, which has gone on all season long among Bulls fans. And really, it's gone back and forth between yes, absolutely trade him to no, he's a valuable asset that the Bulls are going to need despite being log jammed in the backcourt. And there is an argument to both sides. I've been saying it since the beginning of the season. I think that you play this season out with Kobe and see how the team does with him coming off the bench and assess in the offseason what other free agent opportunities there are on the market and get a good feel for what the Bulls will need based on how they perform in the playoffs. Granted, if a team is offering a lot in a trade for Kobe, uh, you kind of have to consider it, especially given the current construction of the roster, but really it would make more sense to hold on to Kobe at a minimum for the rest of the season. So going back to what I was saying earlier, a temporary solution for the Bulls, a half year rental, if you will, would make the most sense for them. This way you don't have to give up on Patrick or Kobe. You still keep your core intact and not disrupt the team chemistry. And because the Bulls are a winning team, one of the best in the league right now, you have the luxury of jumping on a potential player who is on a losing team, looking to come to a top team for a chance to win. There are going to be a lot of bigs who aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg in a trade or a massive salary that you have to keep on your books that would give the Bulls that much more of an edge going into the postseason. I'm talking about guys like Kevin Love, Robert Covington, Tristan Thompson, Derek Favors. You even saw that DeMarcus Cousins has become available as a free agent right now after getting waived by the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm not saying any of these guys are game changers that would make us instant title contenders, but it gives us just enough added firepower and depth to this roster that we already currently have and also what we're lacking and that there would be a temporary solution to where we don't have to sacrifice our future for. Obviously, guys like Sabonis, Miles Turner, Christian Wood, Jeremy Grant, those would be the most ideal pickups for the Bulls, but they simply are going to cost too much in terms of the amount of assets we would have to give up for them, and you're going to have to give up on players who have helped in building this team chemistry that we see today. 
Honestly though, it's a tough dilemma right now because when you see a team playing so well, you don't want to mess with it at the risk of it not panning out. But at the same time, the goal of an NBA season is to win a championship and you'll do whatever you can to get there. What do you guys think though? What do you think the Bulls should do as the trade deadline approaches? Make a move or stand pat? Let me know in the comments. And guys, as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.